In today's video, we'll be thinking about meiosis, which is a type of cell division. Now, there are in total of two types of different cell divisions, one's called mitosis and one's meiosis. Mitosis is a cell division that helps us grow and uh, repair any damaged tissues, and bacteria and other organisms will use mitosis as asexual reproduction to make more of themselves. Whereas in meiosis, which happens in the reproductive system in sexual reproduction, it's the cell division that makes gametes. Uh, which are haploid cells like sperm and egg cells to allow them to fuse in fertilization to make a new organism. And so today we'll be link looking at the detailed process of meiosis. And we start off with meiosis 1. So let's say in the very beginning, we've got uh, a normal body cell with a nucleus, and that's the nuclear envelope with pores on, on, uh, in it. And we've got, uh, let's say, two chromosomes from the mum, so the pink chromosomes, and two chromosomes from the dad, the two blue ones. And as you can see, they have slightly different sizes. And through uh, the very beginning stage, which is interphase, especially S phase for the DNA synthesis or DNA replication, each of the chromosomes would become uh, doubled like that. And they are attached with a centromere in the middle. Uh, be very careful not to mix up centromere and centrioles. Uh, centrioles form spindle fibers for uh, moving the chromosomes around, and centromere is the uh, uh, structure in the middle which connects the two sister chromatids together. So this is the chromosome, and it's made up of two sister chromatids. Then we finally get to phase one. And in all of the prophases in meiosis 1 and 2, it's very similar to uh, prophase in mitosis. The nuclear envelope disappears, so originally we got a nucleus like that. That entirely disappears, the chromosomes coil and condense it so that it becomes visible in the cell. And here we'll be looking at some of the specific bits in the steps. And here in prophase 1, we say the homologous chromosomes pair up. Um, homologous chromosomes refer to uh, chromosomes that are the same, and we get different pairings. Uh, from our parents as well. So in this case, the big chromosome from the mum will pair up with the big chromosome from the dad, like that. And the small chromosome from the mum will pair up with the small chromosome from the dad. And when they pair up, we call we can either call it a homologous chromosome pair, or we can call it bivalent, which is just another term that you can use. And in this case, you can see as well, the chromosomes are sort of overlapping one another at this bit and that bit. And that's because when in a cell, we've got so many chromosomes, and when they move around, they, get, can, they can get entangled with each other. And in this case, this is the first step, which can lead to genetic variation, which is cr uh, called crossing over. And there will be a total of three stages or three events that happen throughout meiosis that can lead to genetic variation. In the case of uh, crossing over here, what happens is because uh, in the homologous pair, they have the same structure of chromosomes and they have the same genes as well. So if this area here on the mom's chromosome codes for um, hair color, then this bit on the dad's chromosome also codes for hair color. And in this case, let's say this bit of the mom's chromosome codes for uh, a blue eye allele and that on the dad it codes for a brown eye allele and in this case they can swap over during crossing over. So crossing over is essentially swapping of alleles. So later on when they split up, uh, they will have a slightly different uh, gene on, on, on their different chromosomes. And now we come to metaphase 1. In metaphase 1, what happens is that the bivalent or the homologous chromosome pairs will go to the uh, equator, which is the center of the uh, cell, and they pair up and line up. This is interesting because this is the second stage where we can get genetic variation, which is called the independent assortment of the homologous chromosomes. Now it's important to understand that uh, when answering questions, you have to say what kind of independent assortment it is. It's just so that you are clear on what kind of random assortment you're talking about. Independent means random, and assortment means arrangement. So in this case, we can either have uh, this sort of arrangement, or we can have this instead. So in this case, you can see, we can have the mom chromosome on either side, or in this case, it's on the same side. So when they split up, you can end up with two cells with uh, different types of uh, chromosomes. So as you can see, the reason why they can move is because of the spindle fibers attached to the centromere, and the spindle fibers are formed by the two centrioles uh, at either end of the uh, cell. And now we get to anaphase 1, where the chromosomes split. So in this case, is imagine if this side, it cuts down the middle, and these two chromosomes get pulled to this side, these two gets pulled to the other side. So we, we will look like this, like so. So they're being pulled apart by 
a spindle fibers. And as you can see from earlier, we've got the crossing over bit. So if I say this bit here, this overlap bit, we have a name for it called chiasmata, just a point of breakage. So when these chromosomes get pulled apart, they will basically carry the allele from the other chromosome. So in this case, the uh, that's allele is now on the mom's chromosome, whereas the mom's allele is on the dad's chromosome, like so. And it's the same for the other bit. The small dad's chromosome will have the mom's allele, and then the small mom's chromosome will have a bit of the dad's alleles, like that. It's important to note to see the difference between anaphase 1 and 2. In this case, what's happening here is that we're separating uh, the homologous chromosome pair. And because we're only separating the pair apart, uh, the centromere itself is still intact. There's no separation or splitting of the centromere. And that is a major difference between anaphase 1 and anaphase 2. Then finally, we get to telophase 1. Uh, and same as telophase in uh, mitosis, the nuclear envelope reforms and the chromosomes become relaxed and become invisible again. But if we just show quickly here what you'll get, and now we've got, if we compare it back to our original cell, which got uh, four chromosomes, now we've got a haploid cell, which means it's only got half the original set uh, of chromosomes. So in this case, uh, we say n equals two, and in the case of diploid two, n equals four. And obviously, if we got the other arrangement where these two chromosomes are these two chromosomes are on the same side, then we'll get a structure, uh, two cells that looks like this. So that's why it's good to emphasize uh, crossing over and independent assortment of homologous chromosomes in terms of leading to genetic variation from the first stage of meiosis. So here is the overview of meiosis one. Here in preface one, the homologous chromosomes pair up, forming bivalent. Crossing over also occurs which is the uh, swapping of alleles between the homologous chromosomes. Then metaphase one, the, uh, the bivalent pairs uh, line up along the middle of the equator and the spinner fibers get attached onto the uh, centromeres. Here we've got independent assortment of the homologous chromosomes, meaning we've got a random arrangement of them on either side of the cell. Then in anaphase one, we get the separation of the homologous pairs and they get pulled to either ends of the cell. There is no separation or no splitting of centromere at this point. Then finally, telophase one, where uh, the nuclear envelope reforms, the DNA uh, relaxes and becomes invisible again, and we get haploid cells. And then both of these cells go into meiosis two, uh, but in the next step, we will illustrate the process with just this one cell. But just keep in mind the same thing happens there to get uh, in a total of four uh, haploid gametes. Now it's probably worth knowing that in, in terms of meiosis 2, it's pretty much the same as mitosis, which makes the process easier to understand. So there is no interface in between uh, meiosis 1 and 2, we just go from telophase 1 straight into prophase 2. And as mentioned in the previous bit, uh, we're going to use one of the cells as illustration. So here, uh, nuclear envelope disappears again, and then the DNA coils and condenses and becomes visible once more. And here we've got the big mom chromosome and the small dad chromosome, keeping in mind that they have got a, a crossover bit on their chromatids. Then they go into metaphase 2, and same in mitosis and everything else, the uh, chromosomes basically line up along the equator in the center. And the reason why they can move is because of the spindle fibers, once again made by the centrioles, get joined to the uh, trimate in the middle. And here is our third event that can lead to genetic variation, which is the independent assortment of uh, the sister chromatids. Meaning that you can either get an arrangement that looks like this, where the crossover bits are on the same side, or you can get uh, the crossover bits on the two chromosomes on different sides. So then you can get another different outcome in that sense. Keep in mind that the normal human cell, there are 46 chromosomes, meaning 23 pairs. And when you get 23 pairs all together, you can get literally thousands or millions of possibilities. And keeping in mind as well that you can have more than one crossed over bit uh, on the chromosome. So literally millions and millions of possibilities. Then we get to anaphase two, where this time the sister chromatid split up. So we get one that flies to this side and one flies to the other side. This time we have uh, the sister chromatids separating and the centromere splits at this point. And that is a major difference between anaphase one and anaphase two. Finally, we get to our final stage. We get 
are two separate cells in telophase two. And same thing happens, nuclear envelope reforms and the DNA relaxes again and becomes invisible again. But this time we have finally made the outcome that we want in meiosis. So on this side, it will get to this side where we will get the chromosome like that. There will be no crossed over bits, whereas on this side we will have crossed over bits there and there. And of course, if we follow on from our previous examples there, then you will get another alternative outcome or you will get the chromosomes looking like this. But regardless of the outcome, what you will get is that from one cell, from meiosis 1, we get 2, and the, the same process happens for the other cell. So in the end, you will anyways get 4, in total, uh, haploid cells, and they are now gametes. So a quick overview of metaphase 2. In prophase 2, uh, the nuclear envelope disappears, the DNA condenses, and we get our DNA again. And then metaphase 2, they line up along the middle, which uh, we will have independent assortment of the chromatids, where, which means the crossover bits may be on uh, the same side or on different sides. Then in anaphase 2, uh, the sister chromatids separate uh, by the spindle fibers, and there is the splitting of the centromere. Finally, we get to telophase 2, and we got our daughter cells. Uh, they are genetically different from one another, and because this whole process happens with the other uh, daughter cell from meiosis 1, therefore we get a total of four haploid cells that are all genetically different from one another. And that is meiosis.